Welcome to my new calculus site. My name is John Gabriel and today I'm going to be discussing a comment that was made by one of my subscribers. Uh, somebody who uses the handle cream bun and I'll explain uh, what the comment is about in a second. So let's begin. Now in the uh, comment that was made here, well, first of all, the video was about mathematical induction, but because uh, this is one of my uh, favorite subscribers, uh, he asked me a question here. He says uh, he's trying to understand why it is that when you cancel out the A's, there's no zero at the bottom. Well, that might seem fairly obvious to some, but it's not actually that obvious and this also uh, goes to show that a lot of the things that are taught at school are taken for granted and in fact this particular subscriber happens to be pretty intelligent um, above average but uh, questions everything that is told to 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 him so for example He's not the type of person who will see something and just be able to accept it on faith. And generally, people like that want to see the logic behind principles and methods. And so, what I've decided to do is to explain to uh, Mr. Cream Bun, I'm going to call him for the time being, why it is that when you have this particular fraction and you cancel out the a's that you're really just going to have a cubed as you see down here after cancelling okay and so this is the response that i gave to him i said that cancellation is the same as using proposition 12 of book 5 in euclid and i'll get to that in a moment so what that proposition says is that uh, when you have numbers in proportion you can add their antecedents and their consequence and you will have another number that is exactly in proportion so uh, that's you you can read up the entire uh, proposition here on uh, this particular site which is run by David Joyce um, and it's not a bad site but remember David Joyce is although he's a professor of mathematics he really doesn't understand Euclid's elements that well and you can also go to the original which is over here and see how it states it in the original now notice that in the original uh, Euclid's elements, <coughs> excuse me, you'll see that that uh, there is no mention of similar triangles, but this knowledge here is, is based entirely on similar triangles, and you wouldn't be able to arrive at this conclusion that you see down here, uh, which is correctly stated. Uh, that if these fractions here are in proportion, then this uh, number here is in proportion to this number here. So this does involve similar triangles. And I'm going to show you in an applet in a second how it's true that if you have uh, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, 5 times divided by... Uh, 2 times 2. In other words, I've just replaced the a's here by 2's. You'll see that you'll get uh, 2 cubed, okay, as a result. All right, let's see how that works quickly. So, if you begin, well, 2 to the power of 5 is 32, as you see on this line here, okay, and 2 to the power of 2 is 4, and if you divide both the top and the bottom by 2, it would be the same as uh, as doing this 
on a similar pair of similar triangles. So if you divide the top by 2, it's 16. And the bottom by 2 is 2, right? So, it, so another equivalent fraction is 16 over 2, right? And again, if you divide 16 by 2, you'll get 8. And of course, if you divide 2 by 2, you'll get 1. So you'll end up with 8 over 1, which is the result. The result of substituting 2 in here, right? And saying 2 to the power of 5 divided by 2 to the power of 2 is the same as 32 divided by 4, which is 8 over 1, or just 8, okay? And so all these things here, uh, and I, I used a slightly uh, shorter example in here when I first explained it to Mr. Cream Bun, but then watch how he came back and he understood why. Uh, it's true also that if you invert the two, you would get one, uh, one over uh, a squared, right? So it's pretty smart, isn't it? How when somebody's shown something the right way, they can complete the inferences themselves and and arrive at the correct conclusion for even anything else that they need to do. So, so this, uh, by the way, pro Proposition 5, uh, Proposition 12 in Book 5 is the theory of all fractions, right? So if you look back here again, you're, you're not really doing any division. It's just a basic process of cancellation that's being described here. So it means that if you if you start off at 32 and you subtract this distance here, like so, then you will have cancelled out 2 from the top and the bottom, right? So because this little triangle here is similar to the bigger triangle, if that makes sense to you. All right, so anyway, you do have to have a high school knowledge of geometry and algebra, and this is why similar triangles are so important because uh, all arithmetic and all the operators that you find in mathematics is derived geometrically and of course even the new calculus is based on these concepts uh, there is no use of limits or any other real form concept and so anyway you can also watch another video of mine called the theory of fractions this particular video here. So if you just type in theory of fractions and maybe add Gabriel at the end just to make sure that you do get the right one. Simply because a lot of people vote my videos down uh, not liking me so they don't want to uh, others to learn this information. And in any case uh, you will find a lot of information here on why and how you got your arithmetic operations, okay? And it's all geometric. Uh, in fact, geometry is sound mathematics. It is based on well-formed concepts which are perfect and exist independently of the human mind or any other mind. And uh, you'll notice that nobody before me knew these things. So, for example, if you look at uh, David Joyce's society, he doesn't even have a clue why this proposition is true. And the truth of it is proved using similar triangles. All right. So there are many things that I haven't shared with the public. And all these things are in my uh, book, which, which is unpublished. It's called What You Had to Know, But Your Educators Could Not Tell You. And because of the animosity and the hatred that has been shown towards me, that book the contents of that book will not be published, but there's a lot more in it than just the revised elements and proofs that there are no axioms or postulates in mathematics. And of course, there are over 800 pages of new calculus in that book, which will never be revealed. But I have been very kind, and I have produced a basic uh, formulation a basic uh, 
explanation, which is this ebook here, which I encourage you to study carefully. And it explains uh, more mathematics than you'll learn throughout your entire school and university career. Okay, and this shows you a new calculus based on sound concepts, not on the rot that you learn in mainstream calculus, which uses limits, etc., uh, assumes the existence of postulates or axioms, and many other incorrect uh, concepts. So I'm a little out of breath right now, and my right eye is hurting me, even though I'm not using it. <coughs> and it's terrible to be getting old. <laughs> But I'm trying to keep my wits about me. Anyway, now that is uh, all I have to say for this introduction here. I mean, this uh, video. And uh, if you have any questions, do, do send me a, a question. But please keep it short. I don't like to get into long discussions. I don't have the energy and my eyesight is not that good. So chances are I'm going to stay away from uh, writing out long comments. Uh, now, uh, please become a subscriber, share this news, click like so that others can get to learn this precious knowledge, which the Church of Academia or mainstream academia are trying to destroy evil people like Professor Gilbert Strang from MIT. Uh, you know, and all the trolls in Psy.Math don't ever believe anything you read about me on Psy.Math. Uh, everybody who comments on that, on that forum or that news group is completely against me. And they will lie about me. They will libel me. They will try to make it seem as if I don't know what I'm talking about. But I am the greatest mathematician ever. And yes, that would sound very cranky coming from anybody but not for me. Uh, uh, read and study my work to see that what I'm telling you is correct and that what all the morons of the last 2,000 years have been writing or telling you about is in fact incorrect. So I've purposely chosen again, once again, to answer this question because I saw the results of telling somebody, of explaining somebody the result, let me, let me re repeat that slowly. The results of explaining a concept to somebody clearly leads to that person understanding uh, much more than he would have otherwise understood and learning why things are the way they are. Well, this is a new calculus channel. <coughs> and my name is John Gabriel. Till next time, goodbye.